Rich, peaceful, and incredibly multicultural, the tiny Grand Duchy of Luxembourg is a pearl in the crown of European integration. Its quick transformation from poor agricultural backwater to big financial center demonstrates the success of Europe's strategy of focusing on peace through trade in a common market. Yet Luxembourg is also beginning to serve as an example of what is wrong with Europe. Luxembourg's neighbors are getting jealous. Strapped for cash after a prolonged financial crisis, they accuse the duchy of pursuing aggressive corporate tax planning and encouraging tax avoidance. In this sense, Luxembourg's success story is an indication that Europe has relied too much on economic and financial competition among peers and too little on political integration and solidarity. The eternal market, designed as a tool to bring European nations together, is increasingly pitting them against each other. At a time when the European Union is surrounded by wars and conflicts and faces collective problems, from unprovoked attacks to an influx of refugees to sluggish growth, it struggles to provide collective responses. Why? To find the answer, take a closer look at Luxembourg and its place in Europe. Don't forget to subscribe. Historic Financial Blowbacks The financial turmoil in 2008 and the first global recession in 60 years posed daunting challenges to Luxembourg's small open economy. The financial sector, hosting 152 mostly foreign-owned subsidiary banks, Europe's largest investment food industry and second largest money market industry got terribly exposed to the turmoil. Beside financial service exports, the contraction in European demand also weighed heavily on the economy's traditional export sectors. The authorities, rescue of Fortis and Dexia Bank, and the intervention in three other insolvent banks were appropriate and decisive. However, these events also highlighted the need for a more effective multilateral response. Notwithstanding the government's sizable and well-targeted stimulus efforts, Luxembourg faces its most severe recession since the steel crisis in the mid-1970s. Growth came to a sudden halt in the third quarter of 2008, and recent indications suggest that the contractions in activity is spreading decidedly across key export sectors. The reported declines in the manufacturing and transport sectors are symptomatic for contracting output in neighboring countries and plummeting international trade. Failures in Ease of Doing Business Luxembourg's central bank announced that the aggregated balance sheet of the Grand Duchy's credit institutions had shrunk by 7.7% over the year, amounting to 926.124 billion euros. As of the 31st of August 2023, the 2.4% monthly drop was principally attributable to a decline in claims towards both the banking and non-banking sectors. On an annual basis, the contraction was more substantial, with a 7.7% decrease in the balance sheet. For years, Luxembourg has been stuck at the bottom of the European ranking that shows that its businesses, excluding those in the financial sector, are comparatively unprofitable. Luxembourg is ranked 72nd in the world for ease of doing business. In the World Bank Doing Business 2020 report, Luxembourg's compact footprint makes maintaining physical links between businesses and regulators or authorities relatively simple and reduces the need for setting up potentially complex systems, such as complicated digital tools to overcome physical boundaries. Lowest Research Spending Despite High Income Luxembourg ranks 21st out of the 27 EU countries when it comes to the percentage of GDP spent on research and development. A surprising ranking, considering Luxembourg was recently named the biggest spender on R&D per capita in the EU. 1.1% of Luxembourg's GDP had been spent on R&D, a decrease of 0.4% since last year. In comparison, Belgium, while spending 285 euros per citizen, proportionately spends the most of its GDP, 3.5%, followed by Sweden, also 3.5%, and Austria, 3.2%. Luxembourg scores far below the EU average of 2.3%. Housing Nightmare, Luxembourg's Real Estate Market
As of quarter three, 2022, Luxembourg's residential real estate prices are overvalued by 61% on average, the highest rate among all EU countries. Topped with increasing mortgage rates, the situation raises concerns. Residential property prices in Luxembourg have experienced a tremendous increase, more than doubling over the past decade. This sustained and prolonged period of substantial growth in residential real estate prices has resulted in a significant buildup of overvaluation in the housing market as well. Adding vulnerability to the market and a possible negative equity scenario, meaning homeowners may find their property is worth less than the mortgage they owe. As part of its credit risk assessment, the European Central Bank calculates undervaluation of residential property prices in the real estate market, using maximum and minimum valuation estimates as measures of potential deviation from fair value. With skyrocketing interest rates and a construction downturn, Luxembourg's property market faces unprecedented challenges, pushing households to financial extremes and compelling the new government to seek urgent remedies. The European Central Bank's successive increases in key interest rates have wreaked havoc on the Luxembourg property market at a time when the country is mired in a construction crisis and bankruptcies are piling up. The new coalition is looking for solutions to revive the country's economy. Negotiations are going well, according to the two parties involved, but time is running out. Foreigners in Luxembourg ignore contributors or second-class citizens. The prosperity of Luxembourg City and other communes throughout the country is the result of hard work by Luxembourgers, as much as foreign residents, who make up half of the population. Just like the locals, they are people who work here, send their children to school, and pay taxes. Foreigners contribute to Luxembourg's multicultural image in Europe, and yet have hardly any say in politics. Around two-thirds of the people in the capital do not have citizenship, and only a fraction of them vote. Decisions about the fate of the city are increasingly detached from the majority of its inhabitants. Does that mean foreigners just aren't interested? Hardly. Just ask for their opinion whether the local crèche is accessible, where the next playground should be built, or if they think the route to school is safe. On Facebook, newcomers share their experiences about a rigid, top-down school system with no chances for parent participation, and even the municipal commissions for foreigners are of little help. Luxembourg's minimum wage, high but still a struggle for many. Although Luxembourg's minimum wage is significantly higher than the rest of Europe, it is not sufficient to live comfortably in the Grand Duchy. The government reevaluates the minimum wage every two years. As of the 1st of January 2023, it increased by 3.2% and was subsequently boosted by indexations in February, April, and September. The minimum social salary currently sits at 2,570.93 euros gross per month for unqualified workers and 3,085.11 euros gross for qualified employees. However, the Chamber of Employees says that those earnings less than 2,961 euros per month are at risk of being categorized as the working poor. Many employees in Luxembourg are threatened by the inequality despite their earning. Furthermore, although fewer women work, just 4 out of 10 employees in Luxembourg are female. They are overrepresented among the proportion of employees in Luxembourg receiving both the unqualified and qualified minimum wage. Comment down below on what you think and leave a like if you find value in the content we do on this channel. Hit the subscribe button for all the latest updates and we'll see you in the next video.